So this is a really interesting article courtesy of The Guardian talking about how Britain's staycation boom may be over. I'm surprised. Not, of course. But allegedly there was a boom. I think it was around just after the pandemic or around the pandemic where people were looking for places to go because they were fed up of staying at home all day and we couldn't travel abroad. So, um, you know, places around the UK were becoming way more in demand to go and travel to and have your little vacations. But I think we all kind of collectively forgot why we don't do that anyway, especially Londoners. Or maybe everybody, forget London. No, I think London specifically because London's a shit city overall. I think if you live outside of London, you probably enjoy the UK better because you have, you know, you have a lot of countryside, you have a lot of hikes you can go on, different type of areas and shit. I think up north you have a you have the ability to go to different types of you have the ability to enjoy different types of sceneries in the uk there's only one scenery and that's like concrete right nothing else but concrete but i think other parts of the uk you get to mix it up a bit anyway londoners for a long time you know i kind of looked down upon because we're not really that you know clued up on other parts of the uk myself included we don't really travel outside of the uk much outside of london much so that's why we all kind of tend to go outside of the uk when we go on our holidays but when covid happened we didn't have the option to do that so we had to vacation at home and that became a big thing but we soon realized why well, we don't do it because it's really expensive it's so insane that in some occasions it's more expensive to book a return ticket from London where I am to Manchester than it is to go from where I am right now in London to Madrid to Barcelona to Paris to Lille to Lisbon to Porto to Budapest to Krakow I swear you could get a return flight from London to Krakow over the weekend that will cost less than you taking a train from London to fucking Liverpool that's how crazy it is. And don't get started on like Airbnbs and hotels, UK wise, fucking nuts how expensive they are. So it's really pricey when you start to figure out, oh, I want to go to Bournemouth. I want to go to Bath. I want to go to Dorset. I want to go to Bristol. I want to go to Devon. All these are fucking lovely places, right? Nottingham, Leeds, whatever. But the trip tickets, the flights are quite expensive or the train tickets are really expensive, which is why we most of us tend to go to Europe, other places of Europe. But the other really far, the other really fucked up thing about it is that because a lot of us don't travel within our, you know, our shores, that doesn't help the economy outside of London. So all the money is focused, all the resources are focused in London. The government, quote unquote, head headquarters, all the government things are run through London. So up north and surrounding counties, whatever, you know, they all get ignored. So those places don't have as much money pumped into them as London do because people don't travel and go and share things there, which is really sad because one of the reasons why people are really looking forward to the HS2 trains, right, that got cancelled, when those HS2 trains, um, when that HS2 line, sorry, was cancelled, that's what a lot of people are really pissed off about because the HS2 would have been an amazing thing because it would have connected parts of London to parts of the midi to the middle of england to the north very quickly so that you could have had people legitimately commuting from manchester to london to work or deciding to move their job or whatever to other parts of the uk because they had a high-speed rail but the high-speed rail got got cancelled last minute you know because the uk government is fucking bullshit but essentially this high-speed rail would have legitimately changed the entire fabric of this country and really spread the wealth across the, the you know across from like you know the south all the way up to the north but now it's all contrary down here which is probably why the staycations have completely you know bottled down because it's just too expensive to travel so let's actually read the article itself it says is britain's staycation boom over short-term holiday rentals experienced a surge in recent years especially during the pandemic when britain stayed at home in the uk leading to a spike in the rates however holiday let owners across the uk are reporting a significant fall in bookings so far this year as the sector feels the effects of the cost of living crisis poor weather and increasingly saturated market i'll just say it's a return to people normality i just say a regular person no matter how much money you have if somebody offers you a 200 euro ticket to go from London to Paris for the weekend or a 150 price ticket to go from here to Newcastle, you're going to pick Paris. So that's the real issue at hand. Even if they live, you know, Paris is still so expensive to live and to kind of do your day-to-day -day shit, no one was, no one in their right mind would choose going to Paris over the weekend for 200 pounds, then going to Newcastle 150. It makes no sense. It continues. 
Helen Angoff, 58, manager director of Woodland Collection Hills, holidays in, in Townsend, Cornwall, about 10 miles from the tourist hotspots of St. Ives, said the demand in January and February fell by 80%. Bro, people who run hotels and shit, like, what a horrible business in one side. Because if the mood changes, the trend changes, your business is done and you have nothing, there's nothing you could do about it. You can't cut prices. You can't do renovations to attract more people. You don't have the money to attract more people. And if you do do it, you're just going to be in the hole for more. Like running a hotel is like a risky business, isn't it? Like if the market changes, you are fucked. 80%. Four. Fucking hell. This year, we had uh, uh, hardly any bookings at all in January or February. March and April bookings are down by 20%. She attributes much of the sluggish demand to poor weather. So many people are fed up with the wet weather. They're going abroad to get some sunshine. The second big factor is the massive oversupply of holiday lets. A lot of people thought that they could make easy money because of what happened during COVID. I think that's true, partly. But I just think in general, it's just too expensive to travel in the UK. It just is. It's just always been crazy expensive. Like the Airbnbs in some locations in the UK will literally make your eyes bleed. Like in Dorset, Devon and shit. You could easily rack up a thousand pound for like a shit, you know, not a shit area. But it's like, bruh, this isn't the Shea, this isn't the, the Shea Shells. This isn't Florence. Do you know what I mean? Like what? This isn't fucking Valencia, you know? what the hell it continues they are supplied by air DN air dna which tracks listing and holiday rentals on sites like airbnb and v viabo um found that 342,000 short-term lets available in the uk in 12 months were up to 19 percent of previous years new listing code homes in the uk jumped 22 percent blah, blah, blah. um yvonne turnbull 58 who lives in horsham west sussex has been letting out her free bedroom apartment in scarborough north yorkshire for between 150 and 175 including airbnb for the past six years she said demand was significantly down on previous years with no bookings for january february or march including half term fewer bookings over the easter turnbull says that scarborough has now oversupplied with lets when we started there were 200 airbnbs in town now you're looking at 1000 god damn so maybe there is an over demand oversupply and not enough demand for the supply jesus christ nor is the problem um limited to seaside destinations vive which offers short-term rentals has seen a 21 percent drop in bookings across the uk or london sorry more than 500 properties properties from january to 19th of march since the same period of last year the lack of bookings is another hit on the holiday let industry after the government introduced um increased regulation and announced a tax relief from april 200 2025 um new controls on holiday lets in england will be introduced this summer including a mandatory national registration scheme and councils be given greater powers if they want to use short-term lengths martin dunford founder of accommodation sites cool places says inquiries for uk self-catering accommodation were slightly down from last year but higher than before the pandemic we're finding that people are more careful they have less money tend to book later watch the weather and try to get more out of their money okay this is probably this probably makes a lot of sense I would it, it, I would really believe a scenario where a lot of people, are, even some of you guys that don't live in the UK, I can imagine a lot of you are probably travel fatigued. I know I am. I never was that guy, but I don't look forward to the plane journeys anymore. Not because of the journey of the plane, just the whole hassle. Getting to the airport, the immigration thing, waiting for your fucking flight to board, getting on, walking on the thing, waiting to sit down, putting your thing on the top, the whole fucking shebang with the fucking emergency, whatever thing when the plane crashes, on your flight, it's just, it's taxing, right? It's literally a day worth of fucking activities you're doing, and it's super, super draining. Um, So I don't look forward to the actual travel part of the holiday. The holiday itself I look forward to. I don't really mind coming back either. I don't really get holiday blues like that. I just don't like the actual travel itself. So maybe there are a lot of people in the uk who just who would rather spend the extra money to travel in the uk and not have the hassle of having to pack a bag a luggage a certain way separate all their fucking you know aerosols and not have any fucking creams of a certain you know millimeter um, sorry a, a certain fucking weight that they can't put in their bag having to pay extra money for the baggage if it goes overweight all this sort of shit it's just stressful it's just annoying so i can understand a scenario where people are willing to spend spend the extra money just to not put up with that hassle me personally i couldn't do it because i love 
you know, the ability to go abroad and enjoy myself and let my hair down and not be in this fucking, you know, shithole of a country. But I see how people are doing it. It continues. Miriam Vangus, um, 60, her husband, have run a one-bedroom holiday cottage in the 18-acre small holdings of St. Clair's in Wales for the past 17 years. She said people were demanding a lot more for their money. They expect more of a hotel experience. Now we see a huge number of requests for hot tubs, <laughs> wood burners, which seem to be deal breakers, trend change. That's insane. Imagine you're booking a, a little cottage somewhere and you're requesting that they have a hot tub and a fucking wood burner people are fucking insane with their requests man what you see on my listing is what i have for, i've got fucker do you want to rent my place or not if you don't fuck off a wood burner or a hot tub she added um we have considered long-term letting and that's something we may revisit um selling up may become a necessity depending on whether things pick up but yeah our staycations in the uk are completely down i understand it um i'm due to go to Wuppertal in germany very soon at the end of may and so far the entire trip is going to cost me including um you know flights and accommodation probably 300 pounds and i don't think i can get i don't think there's a single place i could go to in the uk that's nice right not just a shit old place that i could go to for the weekend that's 300 pounds i don't think so Maybe for the day, I could find one for, or maybe for two nights. But for the weekend, as in you got, you you know, you arrive on Friday, leave on Monday, it doesn't exist. That's how crazy it is. So I'm taking my money, I'm spending it abroad, which obviously is hurting our economy and fucking up, you know, um, local economy in general. And obviously not helping quote unquote tourism. But, you know, it is what it is. It kind of is what it blood clot is. <laughs>